Quasi here. In today's video, I want to share with you the number one misconception that I see people have when they start learning about Neville Goddard and Neville Goddard's teachings. By the end of this video, I'm going to share with you why this is such a big misconception, why it's so harmful to have this misconception and how to properly navigate through it and what to actually do about it so you actually do become a very, very powerful creator of your reality. So please stick around to the very end of this video. I'm super excited to share this with you today. So let's begin immediately with what this misconception is and what the harm of having this misconception is. When I started reading about Neville Goddard's work, there's heavy mention of ignore the how, it will come about. And I truly 100% agree with it. But the problem is a lot of people when they read that they take it quite literally, okay? So most think that you've got to ignore the how. Let me ask you this. Do you think Elon Musk, Oprah, Jeff Bezos, like when they had this big vision of their lives, they were looking at what they really wanted. They ignored the how. They just sat on their couch and they were like, yeah, forget about the how. Just forget about it. It's going to come around. Somehow it's going to happen. I don't think so. I mean, especially after reading Elon Musk's autobiography, this guy's a maniac. He's always thinking about how, right? And these are examples of people who have achieved exceptional feats. And not only that, they weren't one-time lottery winners, right? They weren't trying to manifest a fucking lottery win. They weren't looking for the one best manifestation technique so I can build a billion dollar business. No, they weren't doing that. They actually have real sustainable success. So throughout this channel, I try to share with you keys that will allow you to create a long lasting success that you can sustain, not just have a one big hit and then just have it die out, right? So that's why I think having this idea of, oh yeah, just ignore the how is so harmful. And I'm going to explain exactly why. Let's investigate what actually makes reality creation, what makes manifestation happen at its most fundamental level. Fundamentally, manifestation, reality creation works because we have an alignment. There is an intention there. The intention comes about when we have an alignment in our conscious and our subconscious, the mind and the heart. Whenever there is alignment of mind and heart, we can form a firm resolve. We can intend. If you think about menial tasks that we do every single day, like opening a door, right? There is an alignment of the conscious and subconscious. Before you even open a door, you almost feel what it's like to open a door because you've done it so many times. Before you go out and you know, grab mail from your post box, you've already felt it. You've already felt it happen. And you've already seen it happen in your mind's eye. And then the intention forms and there's no doubting it. There's no second guessing it. Oh, will I be able to open the door today? Will I be able to stop my car today? Will I be able to get my mail to? No, you're not thinking about those things. You're simply thinking, see the picture, feel the feeling of it happening, execute, right? That's it. There's no doubting or overthinking about it. So that's what fundamentally makes manifestation happen. When there is this alignment in our minds and in our hearts, we can see it, we can feel it, we intend it. So now let's talk about like what are the functions of each one of these parts, the conscious and the subconscious, right? The conscious, let's begin with the mind. The mind thinks and believes, right? It just knows to think about something, think about ideas, and it believes in things. So for example, when we talk about that how, the mind needs to see how something would come about or else it'll always get in your way. That's the problem. When we try to ignore the how, when you force yourself to ignore the how, you're trying to convince yourself of something you don't believe. So if you happen to be someone who's a little more cerebral, you need to logically make sense of things. It all depends on the kind of person you are, by the way. Reality creation only works, all of this stuff only works when you have self-awareness of who you are, where you are at currently, and how to work with the current template of your worldview and your self-view. I want you to please remember that. You cannot read a book and try to do what someone else is doing. It's not applicable for you. You have to pick and choose what you take from there. There is no dogma here. 
You know, Neville's teachings is not dogma. If you take everything at dogma, then you're just blindly following like sheep. You know, you're not thinking and reflecting about these things and how to make it personal to you. Every person is different. The answer is not black or white, right? So the mind thinks and believes, the heart feels and knows. This undoubtedly is the most powerful way to create your reality. When you have an inner knowingness that something will come about, that's the state we're trying to reach. But what prevents us from reaching that state? Please take a moment to reflect on this. If you had nothing getting in the way, if you had no mind getting in the way, when you were a kid and someone asked you if you can be an astronaut, you had no doubt. Yeah, why not? You didn't think, oh, am I good enough to be an astronaut? Am I good enough to be Superman? No, you weren't thinking those things because you didn't have that conditioning. So when we try to force ourselves to ignore the how, we're basically going against our current template of the world. If you are this logical cerebral person, you will need to see different ways in which this could happen. So your mind gets disarmed, gets out of the way and lets the heart do the work, the subconscious do the work, right? So if you think about it this way, the conscious is like the stern parent, the gateway. The subconscious is like the powerful child or, or the, the thing with creativity and power. The conscious mind, if it's locked, it doesn't let the power be channeled. But if the conscious mind is on board, it can clearly see something happening. It will open up and the power can be channeled in that direction. The problem with just having heart is it's spread out, it's unfocused. The mind focuses the power of the heart, right? The problem with just having mind is it doesn't have any power, it's just the channel. The mind is like the channel, the heart is like the river. We can take this channel and guide it and direct it to different streams, different areas of our lives and enrich them. So in order to do that, both the heart and the mind must be on board. So whenever you think about your manifestation, whatever you want, you have to clearly be able to picture it coming to life and have no doubt. And that is obviously the state we want to reach. We're not always there. So this brings me to what I believe Neville Goddard truly meant. Let's get right to that. So we're gonna to get to this final key in just a second. But before I do, let's get to what I believe Neville meant when he said, do not worry about the how. He literally meant, do not worry about the how. This doesn't mean you can't concern yourself and think about the how. Please understand the crucial difference between both. If I'm thinking about different ways in which my manifestation could come about, I need not get attached to them. I may think about one way in which I'm building a successful business, but it doesn't happen that way at all. And to give an example of that, when I got started off, I assumed that I would live a life of freedom, having my own business, not being trapped in that soul-sucking nine to five corporate professional job, right? That's what I began with. And that's what I visualize, what that life looks like once I had everything that I want. Waking up in a mansion, in the hills, next to the woman of my dreams, driving my red Ferrari. I visualized all of that and felt all of that. At that time, I didn't know how it would happen. But then I had different ideas come to me. Ooh, try trading, try drop shipping, try starting up a YouTube channel. Then I looked at which one resonated the most with me. Then I looked at the picture and could I see somehow trading lead to that? Yeah, perhaps it matches the picture that I had, the assumption that I had. I'm matching the how to the final picture that I have. This is very, very crucial. You can't just visualize the goal. You have to be able to connect your current reality to that desired reality in order for it to manifest the quickest, okay? I talk a lot about this in the different videos that I make, especially the process visualization and the goal visualization videos. I'll put a link somewhere in the description for you to check it out if you want to. But we have to be able to connect our current situation to the picture. Hey, can I see this leading me today? Yes, potentially, but it need not be the one to lead me there. I'm still open to different ideas. Do you see what I mean? So there are goals that we have and the different doors that lead us to those goals. You can't just sit at home, have faith and sit on your couch and be like, yeah, someone's going to knock on my door and give me a billion dollars and I'm going to be a billionaire. No, maybe you could. If you really had that level of conviction and you didn't have any social conditioning, the mind didn't get in the way, maybe you could. 
I'm not saying it's not possible, anything's possible, right? But I'm just saying it's much easier to work with what you've got rather than trying to change who you are, right? Do not worry about the how, stay with your assumption until it manifests, okay? Until the how shows itself. So to continue on with the example that I mentioned, I was thinking about trading, drop shipping, YouTube. YouTube resonated the most with me. I felt most compelled to do YouTube. Why? Because I saw my friends doing YouTube and they were crushing it and they had what I want. So I had a feeling that, hey, maybe YouTube is it. And I started to make YouTube videos, but I didn't know how to monetize my channel. I was thinking of merch. Oh, okay, all of my friends are doing merch, so maybe I should sell merch. Maybe I should sell t-shirts on my YouTube. But that didn't resonate with me, so I didn't do it. What did resonate with me? Well, I like teaching, I like sharing, I like helping people get better and improve. That gives me a lot of fulfillment. But I still kept visualizing the goal and I didn't know how. So I didn't worry about the how. I asked myself questions about how I could, potential ways I could see that happening. And then one day a lady reached out to me and asked me if I do coaching. And I didn't even know that was the thing back then. Right, so I was like, oh my God, is this a thing? People would pay for coaching? And that's when I felt it. That's when I knew that that is the how, that is the door that would lead me to my goal. And so then I can begin doing my process visualization, looking at, hey, how does this lead me there? Oh, this is one way in which it could lead me there. By the way, the way that leads you to whatever you want could be completely different. You just need something to work with to keep the mind busy. The mind needs to act in order for it to not be steeped with doubt, fear, anxiety, in inactivity. It's when we are inactive, we're always, we have time to ruminate. If you're moving fast, you don't have time to ruminate on, oh, how am I gonna get there? Where's the doubt? No, we're just keeping it busy in its little act and little play while we stay with that assumption. And when the time comes, the right how will show itself to you. So this is what I believe Neville truly meant. Do not worry, do not get attached to the different hows, but still have different ways, be able to see, picture, and feel different ways in which you can manifest. This is something I also learned from playing golf, by the way. When I play golf, before I hit a shot, and every time I get my desired outcome, it's when, before I've stepped up to the ball, I see what picture I want to create with the ball flight. Is it a draw, is it a fade, is it high, is it low? Where do I want to send it? Where do I want to drop it? Getting a clear picture of that. And then feeling that happen. And then setting up to the ball with that picture and feeling a flush shot. What does it feel like? How would I set up if I were to hit it completely flush? Do you see what I'm doing? I am aligning the actions that I'm taking with the assumption that I've made. I'm not thinking about get your body in this position. Get your body in that position. Make sure your head is tilted 10 degrees to the left. <laughs> I'm thinking about, hey, if I were to hit it completely flush and execute on the assumption that I've made, on the goal that I have, how would I set up? This is how. Who would I be? This is how. You see how this is the process of reality creation? You look at your goal and what you want. Hey, if I were to achieve that, who would I be in this very moment? If I were to bridge my current reality with that desired reality, who would I be in this very moment? How would I act? How would I think? What would I think? How would I live? This is when you start to really work with magic. This is what most people don't know because they're always thinking about like, oh, I gotta get into this position and that position. Ah, I gotta do that thing my friend is doing. Me, my situation, individual, unique, my own path, my own goal, my own door. How? That's how you think about how without getting attached to it. And by the way, if I set up to the golf shot and it didn't happen my way, no problem. I've always got the next shot, always got the next shot. It's a game, it's not too serious, it's fun, it's lighthearted. So to leave you off, this is the key that you've got to live by, okay? And this is the key I've lived by for the past four years that's allowed me to be where I'm at today, okay? And this is gonna completely change your life. The key, see it, feel it, without getting attached to it. This is the key that I believe Neville Goddard really meant. We have to be able to see every aspect of our goal, every possible reality, every possible 
permutation and combination, a way in which our reality gets manifested without getting attached to it. We have to be able to feel it. So for example, if you wanted a successful business, hey, I could have a successful business like this. This could potentially happen. I really resonate with that way. But if it doesn't happen, life is calling another way for you to reach that assumption of you living that life of freedom. Let's say you wanted to build up, like me, I thought I would be like a full-time trader, right? But I didn't resonate with it. And I, that picture didn't quite resonate with me. It didn't feel right, it felt forced. But I still pictured it just to have something to work with. But then over time, I had the idea of the coaching business when I looked at that final life, that feeling of freedom. And then I could picture myself with the coaching business. It fit, right? So we have to try different things until we find something that fits without getting attached to it. If I didn't have a trading thing, but something else gave me freedom, would I complain? No, not at all. So that is the crucial difference between focusing on how and getting attached to it. Like, no, I insist that my goals should manifest this way. I insist that I should have this kind of business. No, that's when you feel that inner discomfort. You'll know you're out of balance when you have that inner discomfort and you feel like you're forcing things, right? The next thing I want you to do right now is go ahead and watch this video right here on the law of assumption that I made. So click right here. This video goes into complete depth of how to properly use the law of assumption and have it actually produce results for you in your life and how I used it in my life. Okay, so I'll see you in this next video right now. Thanks.